Texas. <laughs> We're only answering questions about the Texas flag. We're very serious about flag here in Texas. All right, uh, these ladies have been kind enough to come talk to us today, so who would like to fire off the first question? The gentleman. Wait, we would like to make sure you all know we're having our first Smith and Pyle gig. Today. We're in a band, in case you didn't know, because we didn't make that work. very clear. <laughs> Love you, Texas, off of 75. At 9 p.m. And we have free, we have tickets at our table. Plano. Right. And what time does it start? Which you all look familiar, so we think you've all been there. <laughs> yes. 9 p.m. 9 p.m. and it's all the beer you can drink for all the money you have in your pocket. Woo! Exactly. <laughs> all the beer you can buy us until Less the beer for us. <laughs> okay, very serious. Yes. Are you thinking about doing any other movies together? Or things together? Well, we met doing a pilot this year that did not get picked up, strangely, because we were in it. You can understand why that wouldn't happen. Neither Since we started this band, we have like 11 ideas for movies, so we probably will do something at some point. Shawnee, would you like to at add? Least 11 ideas. Well, we're going to do Smith and Pyle movies. We're going to start with the, um, the sequel <laughs> to the first Smith and Pyle. The first Star Wars um, movie. <laughs> <Stella. laughs> we're starting with two, then we're going to do 11. <laughs> we're going to go back down to seven. Then we're going to do 412, <laughs> just us in another life. May I ask a question? Yes. The show tonight, is it promoting a, a CD that you've released, or is it just a band? Yeah, we made, a, we made a record with um, a good friend of mine, Chris Goss, who is a uh, band that masters of reality, or you old metal um, fans, but he produced, um, he's a very well-respected rock producer. Queens of the Stone Age, um, Eagles of Death Metal, that made thousands of bands. So it's like a two year waiting list to record with him. Unless we, you're Smith and Pyle. Unless you're Smith and Pyle. <laughs> this, which started as a joke. When we worked together, um, I, um, I, I just kind of, we just kind of connected and I had been invited to Coachella Music Festival. I thought, who would go with me on a 24 hour mission to Coachella? <laughs> you did too, yes. It could have been you. You could be you sitting here right now. Smith and... Right. Smith and Chris. <laughs> what kind of music is it? So uh, it's Southern Rock. I, little we were driving out there, Missy, so we were stuck in traffic. Missy said, my dream is my dream bigger than anything else. Being a movie star, uh, having children, is to play in a rock band. I said, really? Because I had a rock band years ago, I got all the home, and I said, you know, it's all right, but, and she was so insistent, I said, you know what, I'm going to do it with you, just so you can see that it's not, you know, all it's cracked up to be, and then Chris called me to come to a birthday party, I said, hey, you ready to do that, I'd written some country songs a couple of years ago, she had like 30 songs, and they were all really good, I said, you ready to do that record, he said, actually, yeah, come up to Joshua Tree, and next thing you know, we made a record. We're writing songs together. Missy's got great songs on her own. And uh, we made a record with Chris Goss and Jared Cantrell plays on it. We have all these incredible musicians, like rock guys on this kind of southern record. She's from Texas, so I'm from South Carolina. And now we have a CD and we're playing our first show tonight. It's our very first show, so please come. Started out as a joke. And it is a joke when you can yes, we have CDs. <laughs> Who else would like to ask you? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, Barry. <laughs> who was uh, driven out uh, with Amber from Little Rock? Six hours, yeah. Seven hours. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that in the past, that in the past, actually, um, several years, there some of the most spectacular country music has come from people that are more grounded in the punk metal scene, such as you, like the White Stripes, um, Dean and Gene Wayne, even back as far as like Gigi Allen. Um, and you see the country, you know, you hear the country western, you know, influence, you know, obviously, you know, with them making these albums come through, also with, you know, some of the lyrics are a little on edge sometimes, I think you can identify with that. But um, who would you say are um, some of your country Would you like um, to manage us, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'm intrigued. <laughs> well, who would you say is some of your, um, some of your, you guys' influences, especially coming from more of a background of, of punk rock and things. 
Well, I kept, I mean, I grew up on jazz and all kinds of, I love the Eagles. I mean, I was like, I think I know every lyric to every Eagles song. I wasn't allowed to listen to rock music when I was a kid, and so cause we were really heavy Southern Baptist family, and so of course all my lyrics are dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Still rebelling. I don't know when I'm gonna stop, but um, it's true. It's all, it's it's all right. My dad's yeah, a Southern Baptist preacher. Songs. What? So that's all right. My my father's a Southern Baptist minister, so I, I feel see, you there. I'm telling you, it's and like, look how I turn it. <laughs> maybe she writes very dirty lyrics, <laughs> but it's my very, it's, it's my favorite song. <laughs> My breakup song is called Sugar. Missy's breakup song is called I Wish You Were Dead. <laughs> she doesn't wish someone was dead. <laughs> Although I do say it suck me like a sugar cane. I know. Sugar. I know. My dirtiness is just a little more artistically veiled. Veiled <laughs> dirtiness with Shawnee with me. It's right there. Um, so, uh, but you know what? It was a. Uh, uh, my friend Jerry Cantrell, who introduced me really to country music, oddly enough. I mean, I would go back to South Carolina, and Uncle Fly would be, you know, the Confederate flag is over his trailer, and Hank Williams was always playing on the inside. So, but I, I didn't like really get an introduction as an adult um, till uh, Jerry started playing me stuff and. I listened to the lyrics and I was so inspired that you could have that kind of humor and heart in the music because, you know, I was done with the Find Out Loud. Yeah. I could just pick some. The genuine dark. <laughs> so uh, that's when I, I put down music and then I picked it up and wrote a slew of songs and then had another baby <laughs> put it down and then did a pilot with Missy. And well, you two you hit the nail on the you. head. Hmm? You, you hit the nail on the head, both of you. It's it's wonderful. I really it's really, enjoyed your songs. We really lucked into I playing with really enjoyed your best. songs. Yeah, yeah, we really got for for the amount of experience we have. It's it's a little ridiculous. Or from me, especially it's, working it's, with it's, Goss, yeah, because he's yeah. done so so many. You, every band you named, I've got the, all their right, albums. He's quite he's an artist. We're going to try and band. actually do. I mean, there's a writer strike right now, but um, yeah. we would like to bring back. The musical variety hour show, you know, like Hee Haw, mm -hmm. um, Carol Burnett, show, you know, like a Stu the Smith and Pyle show. And then we're going to take over the country. <laughs> we're going to take over <laughs> the world. And then their souls. <laughs> one by one. A question, please. Sir, in the hand. Did you say a Christian? We do not discriminate. No. <laughs> 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 um, sir, yes. Um, question for Johnny. Um, when you're playing um, in Saw Amanda, what mm -hmm. intrigued you to play the role? What what? What intrigued you to play the role as Amanda? Like why um, I'm, you know, anytime I'm offered an acting job I'm usually intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, what do you like about the character? Um Well I tend to look for the most human thing in a, so to play like a serial killer, that was my approach, like to, which I might have shot myself in the foot because I, I could have really, in Saw 3, I could have really just become a super villain. So now I'm looking for another avenue to, to do the super villain thing. Because to me, you know, she was very human and that's what, you know, turns me on. Like, because, you know, there's serial killer human beings out there. And that's how the whole, um, like, the cutting scene in Saw 3, that wasn't written in the script, but when I started kind of just reading books on um, various disturbed women <laughs> and, like, what makes them up, I read, found this book, A Bright Red Scream, and it really, I saw her all over those pages. And when I talked to Darren, the director, about it, he he fought and, and, and we filmed that scene and he did it really, he edited it together. I thought it was really beautiful what he did with it. But it was a trip, man, because we did a lot of stuff out of order, and, like choices, just kind of intuitive choices I made and saw too, because we didn't even know the ending until a week before we shot it. 
So there were a lot of the choices that when I go back, it looks as if I knew Saw 3 when I did the beginning of Saw 2. I didn't even know the ending. So there's some kind of weird voodoo with that whole trilogy. Quadrilogy, it's going to be like that. <laughs> My daughter sleeps with the direct Saw 18. <laughs> Gentleman in the green jacket. So, uh, was it you, Chani, that worked in Armageddon 2? Mm -hmm. That was a really cool show. You go at the bar, yes. <laughs> that was the that was on my honey wagon trailer on tape was Bimbo. <laughs> <laughs> Can you change it to the redhead at least? <laughs> and like on the door, they'll put your name, your character's name, and if you don't actually have a name, uh, called you Bimbo. <laughs> <laughs> That was the only time I ever drank on the job. <laughs> it was an early call, and I was so terrified. Michael Bay is a real intense. It was very um, intimidating. I think I stopped at a 7-Eleven. I got a little, like, I never do, have done this ever. Got a little bug, and I just, I just, just want to have it with me. <laughs> I actually, like, before I went on the set, only time ever. Until we made this album. Well, yeah, that's the thing with music. It's part of the job is drinking on the job. Not really the same with that. You taking notes, kids? That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> question, sir, in the red. Um, this question's for Shawnee. Like, I just want to tell you, you're really freaking out in the sand. Can you do that laugh for me? Whoa. Was there a particular laugh in that? It was really it was? It was maniacal, yeah. You know what was funny is I had not worked. I decided I was leaving Hollywood and going to um, live with my grandma in North Carolina and go to college, which I probably should have done. But um, I, I ended up staying. Or no, I had, so I hadn't worked for a while. And, uh, and I'd auditioned for that like six weeks before I got a call. My agent called me and said, I got an offer for you. I was thought it was a sick joke. And it was for this, because Diane Lane was supposed to play that part, and then she got pregnant. And Mick Garris had remembered me um, from the audition tape or whatever, and they just offered it to me. And next thing I know, I was out and really filmed that part of it. Someone was in Vegas. You were, you were very memorable. Yeah. Thank you. It was wild. That was just kind of like... I'm kind of a spontaneous. I don't really know what I'm gonna do. Like, like when I took my shoe and I threw it at him, and then next, the funny thing was, right? It was the shoes were like this. So then when I ran, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> and when I shot out of the window, like I screamed like a banshee. I had no idea my my fishnet. I just ripped it right before I did it. I just got filled with this psychotic spirit and. He all cut, and I could see crew members like just fall to the floor. They were laughing. Had no idea. I think I pissed off Rob Lowe, though. <laughs> I was up for a TV show with him years later, and he I said, You know, Rob doesn't really want to work with you. And I, like, I really thought back, and I was thinking, so, You know, we talked about like, you know, his wife. And, he was right. He well likes to share the spotlight. Yeah, I was. I couldn't think of anything, any other explanation. <laughs> well, this will not come as a surprise to either one of you ladies, but I'm not a professional at this. <laughs> I'm actually an audience member at the Not that this isn't a professional deal, that you're, you know. But I actually came to ask you a question today, Missy. Okay. You have an eclectic body of work in comedic roles. Mm -hmm. and I was just wondering what your influences were. Who did, who did you watch kind of growing up? And, that be your badges. <laughs> Father was very funny, uh, not intentionally, but um, I actually, you know, I, I think I saw The Princess Bride when I was, you know, I always wanted to be an actor and I grew up in, outside of Houston, in Katy, Texas, and then I, you know, and I, I remember reading, I was like, how do you, how does someone become an actor, you know, it's like, Shawnee and I have such unbelievably different stories, like, Fight on Ho was about her starting at five years old as an actress, and like, I would have given anything to be like an actress when I was five or something. But um, 
And I went to see the movie The Princess Bride, and I think, I, I sat in the theater and I watched the whole credits and I was just, oh, I was astounded at how funny that movie was and how good it was, and I probably saw it about 25 times. And I could, you know, probably still repeat, I mean, maybe the whole movie. But, um, and then I, I just, you know, I went to high school and was in the drama department, and I don't know that I necessarily thought about going into comedy, but I am so tall that um, it's really difficult for me to get cast opposite because Hollywood is comprised of people who are outcasts, as you may or may not know as actors. So it's sort of like, it's usually like the short guys and the tall girls and then Shawnee Smith. Um, and so I, it ended up just being, and, and I had a, some friends, there was this, a couple all-male sketch comedy groups that went to North Carolina School of the Arts, which is a really good drama school. And, I, and, and my, my boyfriend was in this group called the Joe Fun Boys, and I was like, why is it always boys? Why is it always guys? And so I started a, a female sketch group called Bitches Funny, and then I went to Groundlings. And, you know, it has to be provocative. It's me, it's Southern Baptist, and you start to rebel. Um, but yeah, it was mostly that, and then and then I just uh, like I have some of the you know Carol Kane is like one of the funniest people ever. Or it at Peter's and a jerk is the fun, maybe the funniest thing. I just uh, I don't know, and then and then uh, comedy is so much easier for me than drama. You know, it's just it, I, like the humanity that you look for. I mean, I look for kind of just the, the quirkiness in the character that's that's just a little bit off. is so much easier for me to play than someone relatively normal. Can't quite find the humanity. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we work well together. Does that answer your question? It sure does. Thank you very much. Who else would like to? Oh, I'm sorry. You no, know, I was just gonna say, like talking about Missy's comedic um, talent. Working on a, a lot of people ask me about working with John Candy because I did a movie called Who's Very Crumb with him and making a, the record with Missy. <laughs> She's going to embarrass her, but I swear to God, they were, because, you know, we were, for six weeks, we were in Joshua Tree, and part of making a record is working from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m., and there's various alcohol beverages involved, and shenanigatory, and we're making music, and being silly, and there were more than a few times where, oh my God, this is like working with John Candy again. <laughs> Honestly, just obviously not. Maybe they're the same height, no other physical <laughs> resemblances, but there was just like she is truly a comic genius and just a monster. Like it's just in her, like a monster. Like it was. An, it was I thought that was really funny that she would remind me of John. You're a giant fat man at heart. Yes. <laughs> giant fat I'm fat comprised. Fat heart. I'm completely of candy. <laughs> <laughs> Sir? Yeah, I was going to say the, the character in Galaxy Quest was the closest to you. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. I might be I might be an alien. I was told that by a Penny the Reader once. I don't know why I was talking to a Penny the Reader. But, but yeah, that was an incredible character to get to play. And it was funny because I went to the audition and, and I had a pager at the time because people still had those. And it was like a last minute thing, they couldn't cast the role, and they showed me an audition of one of the other aliens who, um, this is actor Jed Reese, he didn't end up playing, um, it wasn't Betzler, but they never changed his name to Mathisar, which was Enrico Colantoni. Tony. But he, and he, you know, there's a blue screen behind him, and he goes, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I understand that character. Like, I know exactly who it is. I know exactly who it is. And it, it's like, if I can understand who it is, I can play it well. But if I don't, if I don't see it or I don't understand it, I probably am going to be terrible at it. So, I don't know, but yeah, it was like one of those things I was like, oh, that's who they are. It was the easiest thing I've ever done. You know, it's kind of, it really fun, most fun. What are my favorite? Yes, sir. Uh, did the sci-fi aspect of like, grow on uh, how you would usually get ready for like a comedy, like knowing that? Oh, you have to pretend a certain kind of aspect of sci-fi. Well, you know, I had I had no real. I mean, I it's, I had no real um, connection to this to sci-fi, and, and actually, I think it's the best actual comedy I've ever done. Like, I think that is the purest comedy of anything. It's it's so well crafted that movie, and you can sit and watch any spot of it, and it, it plays on its own. It's such a good movie, and and I think it's primarily a con. And it, the heart, it's it's only a comedy and the sci-fi of it is is an aspect of the comedy and that it does so well like if it were sci-fi more sci-fi I think it wouldn't work 
you know, because it's it captured that genre, this, this genre. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's it's definitely uh, obviously sci-fi, but it's it's I think that it captures the comedy of it better than any movie I think probably ever has. That's my opinion. I can all disagree. <laughs> yeah, when is Heroes to start back up? Um, I think I don't know. I only did a few episodes of Heroes, so but uh, I think it comes up uh, soon. I don't know. I mean, we're on strike, so it's very hard to say what what everything's happening to the TV world. Is a little crazy right now. The whole entertainment world is collapsing. Maybe the whole world, <laughs> but uh, like the music industry, the, the internet whole, is just... the internet is changing. Nobody really knows how to handle it. I mean, there's, you know, with the webisodes and stuff like that, I think people, are, you know, the younger generation is really dictating a whole new uh, entertainment. Do you figure the pile of money is big enough that they can figure out how to do it? You think so, but uh, it's free on the internet is the, is the thing, and I think that... Well, they get advertising dollars. Yes, they definitely get advertising dollars, but... Um, it's not the same. It's like, a re it's like really spread out, which is kind of, it's like horrifying in one sense, but in the other sense, it's kind of leveling the playing field for everybody to... Yeah, like anybody in here could, could start their own series on a web a webisode, you know, so... And then the guys green will rise. Yeah. You know, so the best stuff will get, what people will respond to the best stuff. Well, you guys have the music thing going right now, but how, how do you handle something at a time like this? I mean, obviously you want to support the writers, and I mean, that... What, how do you and the fellow actors, what do you guys kind of try and do at a time like this? Well, you pray. <laughs> yeah. And there's still a lot of movies <laughs> being made, so Shawnee and I have had, you know, especially a lot of the independent, like I'm doing an independent movie and Shawnee's doing another independent movie. So a lot of movies are still being made. They still have a, a few in the vault. Um, and I don't think the strike will last that much longer, maybe a few more months. I think it's definitely going to be back. But it'll never be normal. We don't really know what's going to happen. Another question, sir. Ms. Smith, where's home for you in North and South Carolina? Um, I'm from Orangeburg, South Carolina, and um, I have a lot of family in Asheville, North Carolina. Asheville and Spartanburg. Mm -hmm. That's where yeah. we're from. Yeah. Home folks. Yeah. My Uncle Stephen is on the road. He flew him out to be in the Smith and Pine and if we get the Smith and Powell show off the ground, we'll have it. Sir? Uh, yes, yeah. Shawnee, I was about to tell you that I really thought you were a riot in Becker. You were really so Thanks. funny. That was easy to be funny. Yeah. I yeah. miss Linda. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> Missy, where are they hiding the ship? Where are they hiding the ship? Yeah, the balance of quicks, but no. It's actually... Um, <laughs> Back in the old It's not real. Oh, right. Oh, the ship. Oh, right. right. Thank you. Schooling on that movie. Any question? Did you bring any of your CDs? Yeah, we have some CDs. Oh, uh, we do. Yes. Right. Someone, please. I've got two, honey. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, like, have you ever thought of a for the song series? Have you ever thought of a track you want to bring up to the writers? To no, I try not to think of that stuff. Although, oh no, this is awful. There are children. In there. It's funny <laughs> after doing those movies, though, the way the mind goes. Like, I was just in Atlanta with my boyfriend, and and um. Like at any family gathering, we were putting together sparklers with um, electrical tape, <laughs> making bombs <laughs> set off in the yard. And, um, you know, just where my mind started going with, uh, you know, I wonder if they ever thought of uh, torture. And I was like, because oh, I, I mean, I don't watch TV. I like happy thoughts. I don't like to be upset. Um, so I think. It has had its influence, um, but I try not to think of awful things. Bless you. Sir? Uh, 
one of my kids' favorite movies is Charlie the Chocolate Factory. What was it like working with Tim Burton? Um, you know, Tim is, is such a genius, and it's so rare that you get to work with somebody. He, I think he sees the movie, the entire movie, in his head beforehand, and so, and, and he's such a generous person to work with with actors. It, it is truly, I mean, I would, I would quit everything and just work on Tim Burton movies if I was able to. Just, um, that was our first band name on the drive. Yeah, the Tim Burtons. Burtons. I, I was like, can we call ourselves the Tim Burtons? And then it was the Tim Burtons. And it was, you know. He's just, he's a, a very um, uncomplicated man. And, and he's just a genius. I love the, the images that he comes up with. I don't know if you've seen Sweeney Todd, but oh my gosh, it's just such a beautiful, incredible movie. So it's fun, very fun, very exciting. Was it difficult to work with uh, the kind of special effects that I had in that, or? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, you know, we worked at Pinewood Studios in London, and they had 16 sound stages, and actually, uh, of all the different rooms, and like tra squirrels trained from birth, like for six months, and I mean, the, the one guy literally trained a squirrel to run out and hit a guy in the butt, and then that guy was a little squirrely by the end of it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was, it was, um, I mean, the, the main character in that movie was definitely the chocolate factory. So, you know, we would, we would all come out, like sometimes we'd, I'd get made up into that wig and all this stuff, and then like, we'd sit in the trailer, and then it'd be like, okay, it's lunch, and then we'd have lunch, and then they'd be like, okay, you can go home, you know, because it was just, it was so complicated, and like, we'd come out, and I mean, that, that huge chocolate factory, the, the big chocolate river set, I mean, that was incredible. It was a, on the 007 stage where they do James Bond, and it's just this gigantic stage, and um, a real, you know, and a lot of the, they had real for each candy. There was a real um, they could make it real, so you could eat it every single thing. But they had, I mean, it was all fake, obviously. Um, but then you, he let us choose which we were all going to have a private moment with uh, some of the candy. So I chose the one like. A marshmallow, which I ended up having to eat like uh, 35 uh, giant marshmallows, which was really gross, and then spitting them into a bucket. Hot. That's <laughs> but it was a, it was a really and just an incredible thing to be a part of. But it, a lot of it was, you know, we'd come in, walk in, stand, and it, they would give you like five points to look at. Like that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, and that's five. So that's how we spent that. They'd be like, everybody look at one. Everyone go to three, two. Three, five, one, you know, just, ah, ah, and that's kind of what we did. So, but it was definitely a little taxing and not as much, not like exciting, but it was exciting to be a part of a movie like that, definitely. Lady in the white that time. Uh, what was it like working with Johnny Depp? Um, I mean, he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool and like, I mean. I have never, I haven't heard one bad story. He is so funny. He's he might be, except for he's a dick too. I'm so glad you um, said it. I'm sorry, we're not supposed to be. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's like, I mean, you know, he's like funny and charming and real and a very talented guy and just wants to just wants to do the craziest things ever, obviously. So it was really cool. I ended up, you know, having wine with him in his trailer once. <laughs> <laughs> is he one of those method guys? Is he always that character when he's around the set? No, uh -uh. oh god, no, no. He's really funny. Like he's got a great sense of humor, and he and Tim just kind of crack jokes. And Tim was like, "Missy, I feel like you and Anna Sophia, who's played my daughter, you you guys are the most ambitious of the group, so you should always be as close to Johnny as possible." <laughs> like, okay. So I'm always gonna be like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I came in a little later, so the, the CD thing. Did you draw any influence from like Tenacious D? Watch it. It seemed like it's either like a female Tenacious D, possibly. And uh, secondly, uh, <laughs> considering your own world, um, am I the Jack Black? <laughs> Do you need the wait? Do we need wait? What was the second one? Uh, considering you're going to be ruling the world, uh, I thought it means you probably run for like president, vice president. What would you do differently? What would we do differently? <laughs> Where to start? Yeah, I mean, honestly, wow. How do you answer that? 
I I did a lot of comedy. Like I did a lot of com comedic songs. You know, I would I used to, do, to improvise when I used to just stand up and I would improvise songs. And so, for me, like I came into it, and all the songs that I write are a little on the nose and a little stupid. But and I wrote the first song, "I Wish You Were Dead," after a breakup and for a comedy show. And then I met Shawnee, and it just kind of we blended our styles kind of kind of well. She's such a great songwriter and a phenomenal actor. <laughs> but, um, I would probably, honestly, if I was to rule the world, I would get rid of barcodes. <laughs> and maybe iPhones, even though I have one. I'm distracted. Shawnee's very upset that I got an iPhone. To say the least. And I would probably be the vice president. Because I am Shawnee, I run the show Smith. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm not, I'm just gonna put it out there. <laughs> it's funnier your death. Uh, are you waiting for my agenda as president? <laughs> I've got one more. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> um, yes, I think the box, the I box, what is it called? Z box? Something box. X box is the work of the devil. I would get rid of all Xboxes. Xbox I mean, is so like 2000. I'm behind some. I'm talking like the Wii. The Wii. Uh, uh, the Iraq. The Iraq. The Iraq. The Iraq. The Iraq. The Iraq. I would and such. And such as. Such as. I would um, get some more education and maps to the South America. South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> everyone would have free hair care? <laughs> I was talking about like an Iraq, actually like a rack for, to put books on. Oh, uh, I would have a rack. I ran to pick up the Iraq <laughs> with my iPhone. I just think I should get to be president because I have a better rack. <laughs> 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 Which I pay dearly for. <laughs> Next question. Next question. <laughs> Actually, I'd like to revisit that for just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Gentleman in the coat, the white coat. Oh, the only oh my gosh, this is getting videotaped. We're going to be all over YouTube talking about our rack <laughs> <laughs> and such. Yeah, I had a question for uh, Shawnee. How long did you keep the haircut from Saw 2? I'm oh, sorry to see you. Um, all the while I was pregnant. I was four months pregnant and saw two. That was my big secret. I couldn't tell anybody. Um, Did you not tell the, the director nobody knew? Nobody knew. Uh, Darren, the director, found out when my daughter came up to visit me on the set. And we all went to dinner. And she was four years old. At the it's five. She, anyway. she turned six. The making of Saw Two. She took. She turned another and year older. As long as it's taking you to finish answering this question. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know. She leaned over to Darren. She was sitting next to Darren at the dinner table, and she leaned over to him, and she said, "She, I'm going to tell you a secret." She said, "My mama has a baby in her belly, and it's this big." <laughs> I just saw this, and I saw Darren's eyes go. Oh. <laughs> I knew what had the exchange. Of but um, yeah, that was uh, that was the um, I'm pregnant and I don't have to be a hot chick while I'm pregnant. Haircut <laughs> <laughs> after I gave birth and went out for pilot season, I had to be a hot chick again. So the hair came back. The you know. Mm -hmm. I arranged so all the bits and bobs in the <laughs> appropriate way. Right. Very Thank you. Sir, with the uh, State of the Writers Strike, they approached you and said, okay, we can't do a variety show without writers, but we want to do a reality show, follow you on tour for a year, uncensored, would you do it? Are you offering? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let's talk after. We've actually talked about it. No, that was another, we have a few different ideas for launching Smith and Mile to the Universe, but one of them was to, uh, to, um, 
do I like to do a tailgate tour with NASCAR where we play in the parking lot on the Saturday night and you know go across America with the NASCAR and then do like a document maybe get Bravo or A and E or something do a documentary of that tour and just you know hanging out with folks in the parking lot and maybe finding you know different minutia in each town some you know after church barbecue or some, you know, so I can play I Wish You Were Dead. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can offend all the church goers. Um, I thought it might be cool to do a, uh, you know, like a, what, a search for the real American, <laughs> you know, today, like have these conversations and go into these small towns, you know, that. Um, that's how we plan to take over the world, small town by small town. <laughs> So yeah, that's definitely, reality show gets a little tricky because the first thing they'd want us to do is have a big fight. Yeah. <laughs> and we're good actresses, so <laughs> we might we'll just, you know, end the whole thing with the first fight. I don't know. It's all, you know what, we'll do anything, basically. Make it happen. Talk to our manager. <laughs> <laughs> this gentleman right here. Do you ever think that you'd be uh, nominated for a Golden Globe anytime soon? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Why not? Are you nominated? Twice. Okay. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe I think Shawnee would be. Shawnee is such a good actress, honestly. She showed me real the other day. I haven't seen any of the solid movies because I became such a pussy as far as horror movies. It's terrifying me. I'll think about them for 11 years and never sleep. But I did see some of the some of her work. She's probably the best actress I've ever seen. On earth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to consume her on stage tonight. I'm so jealous of her talent. I don't even know what that means. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Still right up here in that. Would y'all want to see a meta comic book character like Saw moving into a comic book series? Um, you know, is Steve Niles here this weekend? Yes. yes. He is. See, I think Steve and I, we have a couple of ideas as far as launching a, um, a comic. But I might have to be a another character maybe there's a there's a, a book actually that is my life's work and dream are you from is, it, is anyone familiar with Shikasta by Taurus Lessing yeah there's a um, kind of a it's big she just won the Nobel Peace Prize for literature she's a phenomenal author if you guys haven't heard of her but she wrote did a series of science fiction Books and uh, I think they're abs I think they're profound. As president, that will be I will uh, <laughs> infiltrate the world with Lessing's philosophy. Like like she has to every hotel philosophy uh, drawer instead of the Bible. You oh, or next to it, next to it. But uh, I would love to combine, and I think now is a perfect time to do it. Like start with a comic and then do the film and then. Where you combine sci-fi and uh, comic and horror, all these genres, and in our practice room at Shawnee's house, where we do rehearse, um, Shawnee has on the wall. She is writing the script. So, in, as a mother, an actress, also part-time musician, uh, she's also an author. So, she's the artist just editing but and president of the Future Pet in the United States. All right, ladies and gentlemen, last question is going to go to me because I've done this. <laughs> Which actor and or actress have you hated working with the most? Uh, uh, Matt, why do you got to end on a negative note? <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear. I'm president. I'm saying keep it positive. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming out today. Ms. Shawnee Smith, Missy Kyle. <laughs> we're going to be right back out here signing and we're going to have a good opportunity to come out with me.